How's the sound? Uh. Too far away. Too. A little too far away. A little too far away. A little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Just have everything moved around because there's like no space on my desk anymore. Can't imagine why. Yeah, I know, right? It's very awkward right now. A lot of growing pains Joe's going through. Right. Like even when you called, it's it's like I have to move to the Mac. Shit, which way do I go? <laughs> Hold on. Because the other problem is that uh, to to let everybody know, I, I bought a new big screen monitor. Uh, it's a forty-five inch uh, monitor for uh, uh, monitor LG monitor, and the MacBook. Not great at this size and resolution. Oh, really? Uh, because it, first off, it doesn't have the, the native resolution of the screen. So I can't mm. just select the native resolution. I have to select something close to it. And so everything still looks stretched sure. out. And second, it limits me to 30 hertz. So not even like most monitors are probably like your standard 60 hertz uh and this this monitor is capable up to 240 hertz but it limits me to 30 hertz so literally like mousing from which is which is weird because uh, i'm pretty sure on the the macbook itself it's it's a much higher refresh rate like going from corner to corner with the trackpad is really nice and smooth and and quick but when you transition to the the monitor it's like so slow and you're really having to like push that mouse across the trackpad in order to get everything to in order to, to just move back to the to the MacBook hmm. it's weird interesting that MacBook is Plus, a bit older just, though so it is an older one definitely so it's it's definitely probably not going to uh, uh, support everything here Looking for this. Yeah, you are. For. Yeah, you are. So what? what is the resolution of that monitor? Or the, yeah, what's the resolution overall? 3,000 3, something by 1440. Dang. Dang, indeed. Dang. I mean, it's an ultra wide, so I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. It was a very nice monitor. Yeah. Oh, there it is, displays. I wanted to see if, if uh, I can see what what it's showing us. Uh, just a uh, no. The uh, uh, Mac Mac OS in general, when you're uh, messing around with like screen resolutions and stuff like that, you really can't do that with the built-in screen. It doesn't tell you like this is this resolution. Oh yeah, uh, and it's running at this this frequency. If you want to like make things bigger or smaller you can just do scaled and it doesn't tell you like what the refresh rate of the monitor is or anything it just runs which is cool but uh, it's the dummy effect but it's one of those things i would just was wondering if i could find out like what is the the refresh rate of this monitor within the os but there probably is but i don't know uh um, if you go to the apple and then about this Mac, are you talking about the built-in display or the the built-in display? Yeah. So if you go to um... the Apple about this Mac displays, uh, I think so. Hold on. Yeah. Well, it doesn't give me the refresh. Maybe maybe if I hit display preferences. I'm looking on a newer MacBook, so like mine shows my refresh rate at 60 hertz. Yeah. This one says built-in Retina display. It's a 15.4 inch. 288 by 1800 um, well that is wrong god I wish that maybe that's the problem so it shows you know, I wish I could show this to you uh, it shows the LG Ultra Gear Plus display as 107 inches uh, 6720 by 3780 yeah, no wonder it's off Jesus right uh, yeah, I mean, this, again, this is a newer MacBook, so 
hard hard to say because I have a newer version of the OS than you. But yeah, under displays it says that this is a 16 inch and it's uh, th- uh, 3072 by 1920. If I do nice. display settings, it gives me some options, but then I do have a 60 hertz refresh rate, which is the highest, which is weird. So I never clicked on this before because I set everything to just fucking go high. Right. Just, um, yeah. But there's a, a you can so there's a, a, t- a drop down box you can select different hertz, right? Yeah. They're very bizarre. There's 60 hertz. There's 59.94 hertz. 50 hertz. There is, a, there is a reason for that because I've had monitors in the past or, or I've seen monitors in the past that will uh, support that like odd frequency and I can't remember the reason for it. It's very bizarre. Like, there's some but weird like this there. one, you select the refresh rate drop down and it says 30 hertz, 25 hertz, or 24 hertz. Yeah, so it must, it must not read everything off of it very well with its generic uh, drivers and everything. Yeah, whatever it works. Yeah, wasn't necessarily intended for this purpose anyway, but but you got to get them up, deals, you know what I mean? Got to get them deals. It's taking up most of my desk anyway. Uh, your desk isn't very big, so when you sent that picture, I was like, "Where the fuck the desk go?" And I was like, "Oh wait, hold on." Yeah, it's under there. That's right. I that... was supposed to get my new desk today, but according to FedEx, it's been delayed. <gasps> I swear to God that that hub that FedEx hub near near us just eats half my deliveries well stop getting shit through FedEx man I'm sorry I can't help that I order stuff and they're like yeah we're shipping it through FedEx curse you and then that hub is just like I need a sacrifice I'm taking your desk for today which sucks because my brother works from home today so having a giant thing delivered to the house would be no problem today but now tomorrow if it gets delivered tomorrow uh, I'm going to have a giant thing stick, uh, sitting outside all day. Unless it gets delivered before you go to work. Ha 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 that's funny. <laughs> Never had anything delivered before I go to work. Ever. 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 I've had stuff thrown at my door at like 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> but nothing delivered before I went to work. Jo- Joseph Cody a uh, little off topic for stuff we t- we n- never really talk about on this uh, here show in the oh. last uh, handful of years uh, or handfuls of years so all right so I obviously you and I are uh, if I said the name Karen Gillian you know who I'm talking about right yeah okay. Nebula, Nebula. Uh, obviously Doctor Who uh, and, amongst other things. So she recently got married as of last year. Okay. No big deal. I don't really care yeah. who gets married, who doesn't. You're now, right so far, nothing we usually talk about. Yep. Now, the thing that threw me off was who she married. Okay. And now, again, it's not like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. It's just weird because, like, you and I both really like this guy. And I'll give you a hint of, of, of who it is and see if you can guess. Okay, this is going to be awful. Where did I go and why was David Bowie there? She's married to one of the Brit Nicks. She's married to, she's married to Nick. That's awesome. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so I saw this. Uh, I, I follow her on the socials, uh, and I don't remember where I saw this video. And there's a clip of her doing an interview show on... Kelly Ripa? I don't know what show it was. Doesn't matter. And they're like, oh, we wanted to congratulate you last time we saw you, or since the last time we saw you, you actually just got married. And she's like, yeah, ha ha. And she doesn't say who his name is. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the fuck? So she's going through all this, telling the story about how they met and like how, like, she like tried to make him laugh because like that's obviously like a big thing because like he's a comedian, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, who the fuck is? And she's like, yeah, he, you know, he wrote for a Saturday Night Live. And I was like, who the hell? So I had to look it up, and I was like, Nick Co- Coacher. And I was like, why does that name sound familiar? And I clicked on it, and I was like, holy shit, it's Britain Nick. So that's what happened to him. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, so him, he, he both of them got hired uh, to write us on Saturday Night Live. I thought they were still doing it, but according to everything I was finding on the internet, 
they were only on as staff writers for like a year. Oh, okay. And since then, he's had small parts in movies and stuff. I was like, I don't want to say cameos, but like bit roles or whatever and stuff, right? And he's done a lot of writing, but like for the most part, I can't tell what they've been doing. It's very okay. strange. And I was like, well, I don't know. But apparently, he's been doing something where he crossed paths with uh, Karen and Jillian. they got married. So I was like, all right, well, that's that's cool. That's cool. But I, was, I, I thought it was neato because I was like, you and I obviously enjoy her work and many mm-hmm. things. We enjoy his work and the many things that he's done. Um, yeah. So I was like, oh, shit. Joe will enjoy this little tidbit of, of information. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I thought it was pretty pretty, pretty rad. Go from making stuff on YouTube to writing for Saturday Night Live and marrying Carrie and Jillian. That's what I'm saying, man. That's fucking dope. That's life goals there, man. Mm-hmm. Um, not a whole lot to talk about today, Joe. No, it really isn't. Um, so in Spider-Man news, uh, obviously this week is the release of uh, Into the or Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part One, right? Mm-hmm. Did I get that right? Um, and so uh, obviously been press has been hot and heavy in the last uh, few days or so with the premiere and all that fun stuff like that. Uh, and apparently the producers, uh, Amy Pascal and Avi Arand, I believe his name is, uh, were doing press and interviews and stuff. And Amy Pascal uh, dropped some news about other Spider-Man projects. So an update on Spider-Man 4, she says, is happening. Uh, it's on break right now because of the, the writer's strike. Um, it, uh, Avi said that... Um, the Spider Woman movie is definitely coming out, and it'll hit, it'll we'll see it sooner than everyone expects us to see it. Cool. So that's interesting. Um, they confirmed that Miles Morales will be in a live action movie. Nice. Uh, which is pretty rad. Uh, and which then I mean, the, if they're making a Spider Man four, it kind of hopefully makes you think that they'll put him in that. Yeah, maybe you know. Um, bring some good jumping off point rather than just throwing him into another property. Yeah, because there was rumors that they were going to use Secret Invasion and um, uh, Secret Wars, which is one of the upcoming uh, Avengers movies, uh, as people call them, but big event movie for for Marvel. Um, and the whole multiverse thing to basically that's how they're going to bring in the existence of Fantastic Four and X Men, all that fun stuff. Obviously, we saw the inclusion of uh mr fantastic uh himself um dr reed richards uh perfectly portrayed by jim from uh, the office yep. um a, a white jim from the office not asian jim he played a different uh, marvel character uh and so we saw him come in due to multiverse uh, of madness with dr strange obviously so we know it's, it's the thing there's lots of rumors saying they're, that's how they're gonna bring across them uh, because they may not just exist in this universe, and that's why they've never been part of the bigger uh, things have happened. Obviously, because like they're all those groups of people are heroes. Um, so a bunch of years ago, Secret Wars two came out uh, in the comic book world, and when they did that, they were able to merge and cancel um, a lot of the other universes that are in Marvel comics uh, to try to slim down the, the, the amount of random stories that are happening. Um, that's how they killed off the Ultimate Universe, which is weird because that's what a lot of the movies are based around, is the Mar- is that is that Ultimate Universe created by Mark Miller and a couple other people, including Robert Kirkman and some of those people. Um, so, they're gonna, I, rumors are, uh, and I think it, it's probably the best way to do it, that's kind of how they're going to do uh, the inclusion of uh, the X Men and in, in Fantastic Four, and maybe even Miles, is they're going to finally come to say, "Hey, like the universes are gonna fucking like, collide and kill all of uh-huh. us unless we do something." And they do that, probably some other worlds will be destroyed. And but somehow this world, with in order to save it, has to merge these two worlds, and now you have mutants and Avengers. Yep. 
Yep. So, you know, the evolutionary change in one universe obviously didn't happen in this universe, but because of this, uh, they got left here or stuck here, whatever you want to say. Um, and then, boom, you have them in a, in a simpler way than saying, hey, we've always existed, but we refuse to help everybody. So we're kind of terrible heroes. I can also see them doing like, uh, like, ah, oh, this other world's about to be destroyed. Quick, everybody to the life world. And they're just like running through Doctor Strange portals and just yeah. like getting over. So little things like that. Um, but yeah, so he's been confirmed to be live action at one point. Uh, they didn't say soon or whatever. They said we will see him live action. So that's okay. cool. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully Donald Glover will be his uh, uncle still. Right. Um, because that was a cool Easter egg from the first Spider-Man movie. Um, and then they, they talked about potential Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Verse spinoffs um, and doing things with some of the bigger characters. You know, Spider-Man 2099, Spider-Gwen, uh, Ghost Spider, some people will call her, um, different ones like that. Um, and obviously, uh, I would love to see more of the Peter B. Parker, because uh, obviously he's been expanded in, in this one, um, because the events that happened in the last one, he apparently now is back with MJ, and they have a kid, mm-hmm. according to the trailers. I, again, I don't know. I'm just extrapolating from what I've seen in the in the trailers. Um, but that I would like to see more about them, because he was obviously a very tragic um, storyline from the first movie. Um, and obviously very, very much so, uh, was like, a kind of a, I would almost say a weird inspiration for, uh, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man in the, the, the third Spider-Man Marvel movie, uh, okay. because of the, clearly he went through some kind of loss, uh, much like Andrew Garfield did, yeah. um, you know, and something bad happened, and he never really went into it. Blah blah blah. So little things like that, I like to be able to like, oh, and and, and like you know, they have terrific voice actors uh, portraying um, all these characters. So and their voice actors, so they can be as old and and if they want to be, and they keep doing those characters because that's the magic of animation, Joe. Right. You know what I mean? The you know characters mean? stay the same age. Wait, no, I get older, and the characters stay the same age. Exactly. Oh, well, he tried to he tried to give us a, a little Matthew McConaughey on this early Thursday morning. It's too early to give you a Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, obviously, uh, Spider Man news uh, to to come about because of the all the press happening with uh, Spider Man right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was pretty rad. Um, there's an interview with. Somebody, Hollywood Reporter? No. Narrows it down. It doesn't matter. Harrison Ford did an interview because uh, of oh. obviously Indiana Jones. Yeah. Uh, Dial of Destiny coming out uh, in a. I don't remember when. Week? Is it next week? It, yeah, it's like really close. Like, yeah, I think it's next week. Which is weird because it still feels like it should be some time off. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't seen we haven't seen a single oh, well no I shouldn't I shouldn't say we haven't seen a single trailer. We have seen trailers for it, but like it Two. feels like they really haven't pushed it as much as they they would push other movies, which is a little scary. Obviously, uh early reviews aren't great of the movie. But either way, but we don't really yeah, pay attention to it. Either way, reviews. it's still really weird to be like, no, it's coming out in a, like a couple of weeks. It's just like, oh. Yeah. June okay. is just jam-packed like with potentially like or not potentially good movies. I'm not gonna say potentially good movies, but movies that uh, as a, as a group we are uh, routinely. We would go to see. Yeah. Oh, what's happening? Extreme close. Sorry. Up. In order to see where uh, Safari is, I have to like because the screen is so big. I wanted to pull up what movies are in June. Anyway, uh, sorry. Into the Spider Verse, The Boogeyman, uh, Indiana Jones, uh, Dial of Destiny, Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, or Beast Wars, whatever you want to call it. Uh, obviously, uh, um, the Flash is this month. Uh, what else in our it's little? Like, uh, is, did you say the Turtles movie? Yeah, Turtles movie is this month. Uh, I think it's the biggest ones of our and kind of of our our stuff that we would normally uh talk about and go see. Transformers, if you want to go see it. 
Elemental. Elemental is yeah, the uh, Disney one, yeah. Which is Asteroid weird too, because like which apparently has more than half of Hollywood in it. Oh well, yeah, because it's a Wes Anderson movie, so it's kind of yeah, like still like I I had I I got winded uh, yesterday when when uh, I was reading like all the actors in that movie. I was like, oh god, there's so many people in this movie. Why does it feel like I'm at like a thousand degrees altitude? Why does it feel like I'm at at uh, the top of Mount Everest? Reading through how many actors are in this movie. Because everyone wants to be in a Wes Anderson movie, man. Apparently, I want to be in a Wes Anderson movie. That's how that's how many people want to be in a Wes Anderson movie. So you're trying to tell me you wouldn't be in a Wes Anderson movie? No, I'd be in a Wes Anderson. That's movie. what I'm talking about, man. I'd be a quirky little background character. Yeah. I keep telling you, I want to be a quirky little background er- character in uh, one of your your cousin's films. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> uh, let's see what else. That was it, that was it for Spider Man stuff. Um. Well, speaking of movie news, since you're looking for the next thing that you want to talk about. Yep. Remember how we used to see movies a lot? Yeah. How would you like to see movies for a one-time fee every month, and then you'd be able to see uh, up to three movies for $10 a month? Yes, everyone, Movie Pass is coming back. God damn it. I knew it. Okay. The idea that never dies. Uh, but they're restructuring it right now. So uh, I'm trying to find where is it. Okay, so you have four plans to choose from now. Basic is $10 a month. You see, you get to see from one to three films. Standard is $20 per month for three to seven films. Premium is $30 per month for five to 11 films. And Pro is $40 per month for 30 films. They haven't, uh, according to this article from PC Mag, rolled it out to all of the U.S. yet. And if I recall right, uh, scanning through here, they haven't, they don't say like who all of their partners are as far as the, uh, the, the actual theaters go. Um, a beta available uh, beta version became available last September, and they've been slowly rolling it out across the U.S. Uh, on level of engagement for the wait list uh, in each market, as well as locations of the exhibit, exhibition partners, the company said last year, starting this weekend, uh, a, anyone in the country can sign up to watch the latest blockbusters or fresh new flicks for less than an average cost of a single ticket. So maybe it does sound like they. They're just doing the same thing that they, they were doing before, where they would just buy you t- a ticket for you. But yes, now you can you can enjoy Movie Pass again, if you want to. Well, here's something strange. Uh-oh. Uh, so if you go to moviepass.com. Uh, Which I have not done yet, I will admit. Uh, it, it says beta. Uh, it, it says right there. Uh, and you can there's a bunch of ones plans, theaters credits. So I clicked on theaters and seen like what it is, right? Because according to the article I pulled up while you were talking, uh, it says it's uh, currently only in um, where to go? Uh, Southern California and New York metro area residents have a separate set of plans apparently. So I was like, oh, where else is ha- does this have? So it said further in the article said that uh you know broke down the same thing you said and says at over four thousand locations across the country yeah so i was like well that's weird because it that makes it sounds like it's other places right because obviously california and southern uh, california new york metro have resident or have have uh different plans right so whatever so i was like oh let's go see what the website says so i click on that link and it brings you to theaters and it has a bunch of states listed yes it does i see that now and Arizona is one of them. Yep. And it includes Harkins Theaters. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Like, lists all of them. So how does this work? Standard plans, because I don't live in the New York City or Southern California. The best seller plan is the twenty dollars a month. So I don't. What I, I, I probably have to do more research. What does it mean? 
when it says three to seven movies. Well, I, I, that is a very weird way to put it because I, obviously I would say you can do up to three movies with the basic plan, up to seven movies with the standard plan, up to premium to eleven movies with the premium plan. Let's see here. What what but, do credits mean? Oh, that's no, you're, you're, why. You're right. That doesn't match up. Because I was thinking it says 1 to 3, then 3 to 7. The next one should be 7 to 11. Thank you. But it says 5 to 11. So what are they? If you don't watch enough movies, they they charge you for it or something? So uh, I want to know it. Because if you look at the, the plans, it um, – yeah. no, I just want standard plans. Go fucking back. It yeah. says – so three to seven movies, seventy-two credits a month, four thousand plus theaters, two D standard imaging or, or screenings, right? Obviously, Screen, no three, yeah. no three D movies, whatever, right? Um, which doesn't really matter because like the rarity of going to see a three D movie. Anyway. Yeah. So I was I like, like well, how, I, li- I also just want to point out how the pro pe- plan is limited supply. Yeah, it's very bizarre because it says thirty movies a month slash one movie a day. Yeah, so you have to wait 24 hours in order to see another movie. Yeah, uh, so you can't just go see fucking nine movies in a day. Which was another pro- which is a problem that they had in the first one, in their first go around. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, continue. So in it, it lists, so it says three to seven movies. I'm just going by the standard plan because it's the best seller. Uh, then it says 72 credits a month, and I was like, what the fuck are credits? Right, yeah, that was not mentioned in the article that I saw. Along the top of the menu at moviepass.com, not a sponsor, uh, it says credits, so I clicked on it. It says, what are credits? Credits are your movie pass currency. Use them however you like to uh, create a personalized plan that fits your movie-going habits. Learn more. How credits work. A, movie, a movie's credit value will vary based on the demand and factors like time of day and day of the week. Credits give you ultimate flexibility. Save your credits that uh, for that blockbuster premiere or use them midweek matinee it's up to you and then on the slider on the side says uh you know tuesdays are fewer credits opening weekend is more credits then it talks about rollover credits says use them or save them up to a month of full uh releases your credits roll over you can have up to a maximum of two months of unused credits at any time in your account for example if you plan for 34 credits per month you can save up to eight, uh, 68 credits on your account. Okay. So, obviously, like like most things, not every movie costs the same. A matinee movie versus, uh, you know, whatever the other ones are, uh, are going to cost differently. Yep. So, that's why it says 1 to 3, 3 to 7, 5 to 11, and then 30 because, well, you get... It depending says, on how you spend your at least guaranteed at least guaranteed five movies in this plan. Yep. Yeah, because the 113 credits gives you enough to pay, probably see opening weekend movie five of those a five month. Times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um now see my my problem with this is Well no, hold on, that's weird. Okay. Where did I click? So I have one website, click your plan, lists 34 credits, 72 credits, 113 credits, and 60, 640 credits. But if I go back to plans and then standard plans, oh, no, maybe I was misreading it. I was misreading the, the credits. Never mind. Never mind. Carry on. I thought I saw, I thought it saw like something in 64 credits. I don't know how to read. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to read. Oh, wait. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's because I was looking at the Southern California and New York oh. Metro. It didn't scroll me. It auto-scrolled me all the way down. Gotcha. The The California and New York Metro is 34, 72, 113, 640 credits, whereas the... No, what the fuck is... Excluding. Oh, God damn it. I can't read. Yeah. That's excluding California and New York. California and New York is 6,840, 200, and 1,200 credits. Which makes sense. Those are generally more expensive theaters. Yep. Okay. Never mind. I don't know how to read. Now I do. 
Um, it does say on here. Um, so I was looking at the, the 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 frequently asked questions, and one of them is what kind of movies are included with my membership. It says you can currently see most 2D movies with your movie pass, but access to large format and premium screens is coming soon. So, Cine One wouldn't be included in this. Doesn't sound like it. Okay, well that kind of eliminates that right there. The savings obviously would be drastic because like a like. For for like the plans, right? A standard plan, mm-hmm. uh, twenty dollars a month. That's the price of at least two movies, right? Yeah. Like if you see it in a regular theater, that's the price of a little more than a than routinely for a Cine One. Cine One's anywhere from like maybe eleven dollars, sometimes like thirteen to fifteen dollars, depending on when you go see it. Um, here in Arizona, at least, I don't, I can't speak for prices anywhere else. Uh, I mean, I could if I looked them up, but I'm not going to. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of like a, a, a cool thing. My my problem with this is, and I have to keep looking at it, see if I can find an answer, is uh, I'm not bragging, but I have a second person in my life that goes to movies with me. Mm, yes, how would you do that? Because if it's a pick-your-seat type thing, how are you picking two seats together? Exactly. And I don't see a plan on here for... Yeah, so would I have to get uh, two standard plans, which basically makes it forty dollars a month? You probably would, and then you would just have to make sure that when you picked your seat, that there would be an open seat next to you that they can immediately pick. That's what I'm saying. That's the way it sounds like it would have to work. I mean, in most cases, that probably would work out as well. But what I, I I'm thinking a lot on the same lines, though. A lot of stuff has gone digital now. And so I, my question is, how does the digital ticket work then? Is it something that's just, they, you pay them, you select the movie, they pay the theater, and then get the e-ticket? Because that's what they call it here, it says e-ticket. And then is it stored in the app? Is it stored through Fandango? Is it stored through, like, who, who, who stores that, that digital ticket? So, from the pictures of the app, it looks like it's in their app. Right. But, because, like, obviously Fandango gives you, like, a, a, a ticket. that like, yeah, For us, it goes into our, our wallets on our iPhones or watches or whatever, right? Um, But to your point, what, like, do they, does it also generate the same kind of e-ticket that Fandango does? Right. And that's what I'm wondering. It would have to. Because they say, they show, what's weird to me is they, so it's easy as one, two, three. It's on the, it's on the, 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 the website. It says download the app and choose your plan from the um, occasional movie goer to the uh, avid cinephile, blah, blah, blah. It says step two, re- receive your passport to adventure. And it shows a MasterCard. Yeah. It says your movie pass card is your ticket to use your membership at nearby or nearly any movie theater. It will arrive within 10 to 15 business days. Right. And that's what I see here too. It says it's a little movie pass debit card from MasterCard. Well, Well, then what I don't get is the third step is download the app and choose your plan, which is the same as step one. Yeah, I don't understand it either. Then it says under that, with America's largest theater network, you can uh, you have more than four thousand theaters to choose from. Why is step three the same as step one? If I already downloaded the app and chose my plan, so obviously that's a typo of some sort, right? Shouldn't it be step three? Should be like, open the app and buy your ticket. Or something it, that's very true like you should be getting your plan first before you download download and download the app and choose your plan step one step two receive your passport to adventure step three download the app and choose your plan so and then my other question <laughs> would be why do i have a mastercard for and it the only if i'm I, buying I, digital like can you use that when you go I, like to as a yeah. savage to a box office 
that's the only thing I can think of. That's the only thing I can think of is that they, they basically use it as, hey, I'm out and about. Um, for some reason, I'm in a place that doesn't offer you know, cell service or Wi-Fi or anything. So, you know, here's my movie pass MasterCard. Uh, I want to buy a ticket. That's the only thing I can think of. And it says your movie pass card will arrive within 10 business days of your sign up. Your account will renew one month after your card has been is activated, whichever comes first. I don't understand that at all. So will it renew a month after the do you sign up or will it renew after the like the 10 business days that the card will take to get there or when you actually activate the card I have no idea it's so weird that even their facts and questions are pretty yeah uh, they they mention the movie pass card but they don't they only the only question for it is just how long will it take to get there and it's like yeah take within 10 business days it's like yeah but what's it for that's what I'm that's what I'm wondering like there's what a what do you use it for how to see a movie there's a YouTube video that I don't want to play because it'll play audio once you've once you've arrived at the movie theater open your movie pass app select the theater movie and show time to check into your movie once you're once you press check in Go to the kiosk to purchase your movie ticket with your MasterCard. So it basically loads your card with, with the credit, the, the credit, and then you use the card to pay for the movie at the movie. So you're not paying. So you're not buying an e-ticket. You're not buying an e-ticket. Okay. How do I check in at a movie? You must be at the movie theater to be able to check in the movie pass app. There's a video, obviously. Can I use my so movie pass to buy tickets? I sit else? at home and be like, hey, I want to go see Oppenheimer. Uh, let me just load that onto the card. I'm going to go to the theater, then do the rest of the stuff. It's literally saying I have to be at the movie theater physically so, to be like, I want to see Oppenheimer. My question, though, and I'd have to watch the video to see if it gives me any details. Because I don't see it in here. So it gives you an e-ticket, right? So does that reserve you a seat? I, I don't think it does. It just probably reserves the, the balance on your ticket. Because you're physically not reserving the seat until you enter it into the, the company's system. But if you're not entering that into the company's system, they're not going to reserve you a seat. That wouldn't be beneficial for movie theaters to be like, yeah, we're going to, uh, oh, you, you're thinking of going to watch Indiana Jones? Cool, we'll just reserve you a seat until you come into the theater and actually pay for it. Yeah, the cause, theaters aren't going to want to do that. Yeah, because this says once you've arrived at your movie theater, you open your movie pass app, then you select your theater, your movie, and your showtime. Check into the movie, and then you do the uh so you cannot buy the ticket ahead of time right you can't be at home and say i want to go see this movie i'm just going to check in right now yeah i don't want to show this. up within 10 minutes of blah 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 swipe my movie pass card and then go in to get and get my ticket and go in yeah i don't like this at all yeah no the more the more we read into this is this is almost this is just as bad as the original. Yeah. I don't understand how they think that this is going to be a good idea. Uh, and then, by the way, in here, it says, can I use my movie pass uh, to buy tickets for someone else? It says, no, at this time, you can only use your credits to buy one movie per day. Yeah. So the other person would have to have it at their own account. Yeah. So and also have to do the same thing. You both would have to be able to like hey you want to go see this movie cool uh let's drive down to the fucking theater open up our movie pass apps select the theater because apparently you have to 
what's even worse about that idea is that you can't even say like the app isn't even smart enough to be like hey man you're near this theater are you selecting this theater it sounds like no you have to go down there and then you have to select the theater that you're literally standing in front of i'm confused Pick the movie that you want to see and then it basically loads the credit card up with the amount of credit for that movie and then you walk up to a kiosk and buy a paper ticket so further down the, so you, the frequently you have or... to both like hope that the oh, theater yeah. isn't full yeah that's probably why it's probably one of the reasons why they don't they don't want you to, to do it from home because you're not buying a ticket you're buying you're you're reserving your credit in the app but that doesn't reserve you a seat at the theater. Yeah. So once you get to the theater, you can then actually see if there are uh, seats available. So in the same area, uh, if you look at the frequently asked questions, there's two sections you can click on. One is okay. facts, the other is how to use your movie pass. Okay. In there is the video that I was talking about and the other things. But then at the very bottom of the list is when can I start going to movies? It says... See a movie the same day you sign up with e-ticketing at participating theaters in your area. So maybe certain theaters do you allow you to buy digital tickets, but not all theaters allow you to buy digital tickets. Yeah. That, that's how they get around. That's how they get the 4,000 theaters without having direct deals with those 4,000 theaters. Because those ones, they the can, ones that don't allow e-ticketing through a third party app or don't have an agreement with movie pass. So movie pass is just like, well, we're going to get around that by you have to be at the theater. So you can uh, then do all the shit that we just talked about. But then the theaters that we do have business agreements with, which was, I would almost have to bet is AMC. Uh, well, they just allow us to buy the tickets through the app, much like Mandango which is a better experience, but also kind of shitty. Yeah. Because that's the only way you get 4,000 plus theaters available in your app. They're not really available. Hmm. So, I'd have to look and see what, what else the video says because the, the facts are and just not making a whole lot of sense. Um, the list of movie theaters available in California, by the way, is staggering. I imagine that there, obviously, there's a lot of big chains over, over there, and there's just a lot of small ones, too. Yeah, because they have, like, every brand of ones and ones I've never heard of before. Not that I know all the movie theaters in California, obviously. I only lived in one area there, and it was 20-something years ago. Um... Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, also, I would almost beg to wonder if a lot of these theaters don't even know that they're actually on this list. My 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 thing about it would be like, yeah, they. I mean, obviously, if their e tickets have to be recognizable at these theaters, right, or whatever, right. My my question though is, because I can't see on this list of anywhere what movies are e tickets and what movies do I have to use this fucking Mastercard thing at. I think it, it's not per movie; it's per theater. That's what I'm saying. This like what theater? AMC probably. I would almost. I would almost guarantee AMC is one of the ones that. But uh, I, okay, I guess to your to your point is more or less what theaters offer e ticket versus what theaters I have to physically go down to, and check into. Yeah, because like it, right? e, e, an e ticket would would mean you have a ticket. It's right. It's not. Res it's reserving a seat at that point. It's it an e-ticket. It's literally e reserving a seat. I have it right here. I walk in, boop, scan, go in. Right. That's an that's an e-ticket. That's what we do for Fandango. It's what you do through the Harkins app and probably the AMC app. Not that I've ever used it to buy a ticket because I don't go to AMC's. Right. Uh. But because looking at this list, every Harkins that's available in both in in the the three states I think they're available in California, Arizona, and Colorado are all listed on here. I double checked them. I, every every Harkins theater is listed on this list in their respective states, mm -hmm. but nowhere on this list tells me this theater Supports does. 
Yeah, so the e-ticket to me sounds like I can buy the ticket in advance. Like we say, hey, on this day at this time we want to buy this, we want to go see this movie, right? I am reserving my seat. In fact, it's J13. Exactly, right? That's the, I know that's my seat. I bought it. I, I paid my money for it, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. That's an e-ticket. The MasterCard makes me think that that's that it's it's the opposite of what it's what I was thinking before. The MasterCard is for these little boutique theaters, the ones that don't like you were saying, authorize e-ticket sales through third-party apps, probably don't have their own app. They're just a regular ticket place. Right. So then you go, but you have to go through the kiosk for it to work because it says kiosk specified twice on two different facts. You have to go through the kiosk to then select your uh, – to buy your ticket. You don't select it. It says you do that through the app, and then the app somehow communicates through the kiosk to use the MasterCard. But you have to be at the location to do it. Question, though, and I couldn't find an answer to this. What if you were could to draw... So, say, for example, we went to Harkins Estrella Falls, right? Mm-hmm. We knew we wanted to see Indiana Jones uh, the night it comes out, Thursday, whatever happens to be, Friday morning. doesn't matter. doesn't matter the time. We want to do that, right? Tickets are now available. We know that. What if we were to drive down to the movie theater today, right? Movie's not out yet. Comes out next week or whatever it is. Drive down the movie, select the movie we want, and then get the ticket. Is that reserving it? So then we go back, check in on the day of, and then get our ticket out of the kiosk? No, I, I don't. It, it, there's nothing in there that makes it sound like that you can just go down there early and do this process because part of it literally sounds like that you have to be there day and time of the theater of the movie that you want to watch to use the MasterCard yeah because it says once you've arrived at the movie theater open the movie pass app select your theater movie and showtime to check in to your movie once you press check in, you have to go to the kiosk. So you couldn't do that ahead of time, right? It doesn't sound like it, no. So you'd have to be at a theater that does the e-tickets, the only way to buy a ticket ahead of time. Yes, that's the way it sounds like. Also, we couldn't see Cinema 1, so kind of don't want to do it anyways. No, yeah. But also, I'd have to pay for two of these, or I'd pay yes. for one, page, pay for one, whatever it happens to be, you know. Yep. Uh, what, is, what is hers is mine, and, and or what is mine is hers, and what is hers is hers. Yes. Um, but yeah and it says how do I check into a movie and it says you must be at the movie theater to be able to check into the movie pass app and it says check the video for step by step it says how do I use my movie pass to buy tickets for someone else it says you can't then how do I start you know when when can I start and it says you can start as soon as you sign up as long as the participating theaters in your area use e-ticketing other theaters will require the MasterCard for ticket purchase. So it makes me think that, again, majority of these theaters who do offer e-tickets probably use the e-ticketing through MoviePass. Mm-hmm. My question, though, is how long is this going to ever last, though? The way this is structured and the way this sounds, it's not going to last long again. Because if we look at the passes, right? So, again, we'll go by the bestseller, as they stated. The standard one, right? Mm-hmm. So, say you you see, I don't know, let's let's t- let's take a look at the old Fandango real quick and see what a movie price, a movie ticket is currently for uh, a, a upcoming movie, right? Uh, look, oh look, here's Spider Man in Across the Spider Verse Part One, which is by the way, it's not listed as Part One on here, but that's fine. So today it comes out today this afternoon. Actually, as early as two p.m. That's not even this afternoon. They might as well just put these movies out whenever they want. Uh, so say we're going to go to, um, we'll go opening, opening night time, right? Uh, apparently a lot of these are sold out, which is terrifying. Anyhow, uh, so we can't do Cine 1, we know that because it doesn't in- include large format, right? So we'll do regular movie time. We'll say 7, 7 p.m. Okay? Okay. Scanning my face. Uh, there's a mic cord in the way, apparently. There we go. Um... 
Mm, 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 mm. Wow, there's not a whole lot of tickets left, but that's obviously because the movie comes out tonight. So that cost me twelve dollars and fifty cents. This is saying that I could do this three times minimum, three times a month. Right. For twenty dollars. Right. So technically speaking, that is in our area, Arizona, uh, at a Harkins. That is the price of less than two movie tickets. Yeah. So it's a good deal. No. Yeah. But again, I'd have to. I'd have to at least see three movies a month per person to yep. justify it. Yep. So for that forty dollars a month, Paige and I would have to go to at least see at least three movies, which with Movie Pass makes it actually a little easier because you're already kind of paying for it, right? True, but and you it's... get to bank your credits, which is nice too. Right, you're not losing them like I think in the past where it was just yeah, if you didn't see the movies, you don't see the movies. Yeah. Like, there is definite value to be had in the very least here. As long as you see three movies a month. Yeah. They're going to be banking on most people not seeing enough movies to cover their co- their monthly cost. Well, they don't, I'm not most that's people. How that, that's how business works. You don't offer these, these discounts and then expect everyone to use them. If everyone used everything to the fullest, they're going to go out of business really quick mostly as they did last time yeah because I wonder how that works like obviously the credits are their way of um getting the pricing obviously because like movies the pricing fluctuates Mm -hmm. so my my real question though is this is a generalized credit amount right yes 72 credits for this for the standard pass right Mm-hmm. Obviously, a movie here in Phoenix area, Phoenix metro area, uh, probably costs less than, say, a movie. Actually, I can probably tell you. Um, how much is a movie ticket in California? I would almost say what costs twelve dollars here is probably thirteen to fifteen dollars there. Uh, adults, fourteen to eighteen dollars is average price at AMC tickets in California. Yeah. Uh, that's just a quick Google search. Is that accurate? I don't know. We'll say sure. Um. And if you're a senior, six year plus, it's twelve to fourteen dollars. Uh, if you're a child, ages two to twelve, it's ten to twelve, ten to twelve dollars. Anyhow, so obviously those credits would actually technically be worth more in certain places so does that equate differently like right this says three to seven movies right but if i'm in arizona could technically i squeak out a fourth movie at that premium rate of 1250 for my 72 credits i would say it's a possibility i just wish there was a way for us to gauge it no breakdown you're saying of what the the cost per credit is yeah because there's right. a fancy little slider on their website that just says, hey, Tuesday at this time, it's this much money. Or this many right. credits, right? But it doesn't show number. It says, like, Tuesdays, fewer credits. Opening weekend, more credits. Right? And the slider goes up. So, like, Tuesday, let fewer credits, right? Weekday matinees, a little more. Weekday evenings, a little more. Weekend evenings, more. Opening cred- uh, Opening weekend, more credits. But no one here doesn't specify. So would I... They're guaranteeing me three movies a month for that $20. So somehow that credit is enough, should be, because they say three, to get me the minimum of three movies per month in my area. Yes. But that's, again, a general statement because also it could be saying, hey, if you live in... California, the minimum price is fourteen dollars versus twelve fifty. So you say, hey, that's a difference of a dollar fifty, right? If we do basic math, that somehow equates to maybe a fourth movie, but maybe not because we don't have that. But if you're in like 
I don't know, Wyoming, where like 17 people live, the movie price for a ticket is probably cheaper than 1250. So then you could squeak out a fourth ticket or up to seven, you know, for that. Again, we're going by opening weekend pricing, right? Like say 1250 for a brand new movie that's coming out this week. So does Google tell me how much a ticket is in Wyoming? What's going to be interesting too is let's say you go on vacation somewhere, California. You live in Arizona, you go on vacation vacation to California and you want to use the service. Technically, I mean, I guess you'd be using more points to do that than if you were in Arizona too. Uh, so you're going to have a weird points discrepancy just because you traveled to another state and saw yeah. a movie. Yeah, according to the internet, uh, in Wyoming, uh, Rollins, Wyoming, which apparently is a thing, uh, general mission price ranges from $11 to $9 for general mission adult pricing. So there's another dollar fifty cheaper for that probably opening weekend, $11 versus twelve fifty. Mm-hmm. So, So in Wyoming, you could probably see more movies base than Arizona because they're generally cheaper yeah as well and that's why you get to that th- anywhere from three to seven because exactly. that's a general number hey the most you spend on a movie like across the country you're gonna get at least three movies that's yes. what they're saying it will yep. unless it's New York City or Southern California which right. apparently is more expensive I guess yes uh, so they have different plans um so yeah it's interesting because no one here, like, obviously, like, they don't break down the pricing in here, which is kind of shitty, because I'd like to be able to, like, hey, I live in this state. How much are my credits worth? How many movies can I, right. like, what does it kinda... look like for me? Yeah. Because it, it'd be worth it if I could spend $20 a month and definitely get seven, seven movies every every month. But because I live in a slightly more expensive state, uh, I might actually only be able to see up to five movies a month. Yeah. You'd almost have to just try it for a month and see what see how the points knock out. Also, the points do it. don't make sense. One All to three movies is thirty four credits. Three to seven movies is seventy two credits. It's not like a doubling. Yeah, well, and it's, it's not even it's $10 like ten dollars a month. I mean, it it almost more or less just sounds like the more you spend, the more you save type of things. Obviously, because if they go from $10 to $20 and all they do is just double your points, that'd be 68 points, but they give you 72 points. Because it's three to seven movies, not one, or not three to six movies, or four to six movies technically would be what it would be. Yeah. So what's the discrepancy here? So at the maximum, right, of seven movies, you're technically a little over, you're 10 point something um, oops, I don't know how to math in my head, let alone on a calculator, apparently. Yeah, 10.2 points per movie at seven movies in the standard plan. So if we were to go to uh, 13 divided by 11, yeah, so it's roughly 10.2 credits for the minimum or for the maximum movie amount. And a little more for the basic plan because you get 34, which is 11.3. The The top one doesn't make sense, though. 30 movies, right? That's one a day. Yep. So 640 divided by 30 comes out to 21 credits. Per movie. Per movie. But you're seeing one a day, so kind of like, well, you can see one a day on any of these plans. You just wouldn't see it's only three days or seven days or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. That's 30 days, which technically in February they should give you a discount because there's not 30 days. There's only 28 or 29. 29 days, yeah. So should I be able to see two movies in a day on certain days in February? What about the months that have 31 days in them? You don't get those, uh, Joe. 
and there's not enough of, of those to counterbalance the two days you lose in February because there's more months in the year that have 31 days than there is February so hmm it's interesting yeah because it's like 11.3 for the basic 10.2 or 10.3 here and then 10.2 there and then 21 there So I wonder if limited supply means there's only so many per state or something you can they can sell for those. Seems really dumb, but but that was one of the problems that they had with the first one where people were actually using up all their shit. Yeah. Still so that I could see them limiting. That doesn't even equate stuff. very well for math. It's a limited why quantity, suddenly, right? Why does sudden? That's the thing that does, that I don't get. Why does suddenly the price, the points per ticket, the credits per ticket, jump up ten points when you go to the uh, the pro plan? Yeah, because even like the the difference in oh, actually, wait, that's not though. No, that... Because actually, I mean, you couldn't see more than thirty movies. So if, if, if a high-end movie costs you 10 points every day... Oh, that's why it's 20. You're never going to use all of your credits in that month. Yeah, so if... Yeah, that's that makes no sense. Because if the math for everything else, else works out to 10.2 credits per movie, when you hit that pro mark... You're literally just throwing money at them and telling them to keep it because there's no way that you're going to ha you're going to use up all those credits every month. Even if you go to one movie a day, the way it sounds, the way it works out, even if you go to one movie a day, it doesn't sound like you're going to be able to use up all those credits. Because what would be what would be 10.2 or yeah, 10.2 times 30 movies? I don't have a calculator. Three hundred six. So I th I think I just figured it out. Okay. Roughly basic basic math. Going by the numbers, right? Like what we have okay. in front of us. So if we equate, uh, so if we look at the numbers, right? So thirty movies. Say you can go see thirty movies a month, right? Mm -hmm. Thirty movies. Um. Times ten point two, which was sort of kind of an average but not really that's 306 right so obviously you're not hitting that 640 I did the I did the opposite looked at the numbers and said what the what is the minimum amount of movies you can watch for your credits right they equate to over 20 credits per minimum movie so oh. in the standard plan right because I, I did the thought my I thought in my head I was like wait a minute hold on the person getting the pro plan right that's a that's a cinephile. That's someone who's going to go see every movie possible, right? Yes. Or a movie multiple times, which I, but I can't find in here if you can see the same movie multiple times. I couldn't find it. I, I would say as long as you're seeing it on a different day, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um. So I, w I did that same thing, right? So if we if we said I had 70 – so the standard plan, $20 a month, probably plus taxes, whatever, right? 72 credits. Minimum movies you can watch is, th is three, right? So 72 divided by 3 gives you 24 credits. Okay, so we were working off of the, uh, the other side of the map. Yeah. So if you go by that same thought process, right? You say see at least say 3 movies. So 3 mo so 3 credits or 3 movies on opening weekend gives you 24 credits per it gives you your 72, right? At the max maximum. So 24 yeah. we'll say dollars amount, right? $24 per one of those movies if you live somewhere that's horrendous in movie pricing, right? Mm -hmm. Cool, whatever, right? We do that same math the, on the other end, which we did, right? The 640 uh, divided by 30 gives you 21.3, right? So by going by that route, if you're thinking about it, you're actually saving money. It's only $40 a month, right? Mm -hmm. So if we said uh, here in Arizona, primetime opening weekend, 
for a brand new movie is 1250 right? Mm-hmm. We times that by 30, that's $375. Case you're saving a lot of money. Exactly. So then we look at okay, forty dollars a month times twelve, you're spending four hundred and eighty dollars a year. Versus again, if you went to saw thirty movies, right? Mm-hmm. At twelve dollars and fifty cents, again three hundred and seventy five dollars. You do that every month, right? You could. Obviously, like we could obviously it's not gonna be the same because again, February is 29 and 30 certain days certain months have 31 doesn't matter um so we do that times 12 you'd spend forty five hundred dollars a year on movies versus the buying that plan yeah well actually let's do this let's do the non-psychopath fucking number right so say we we all we got the standard plan we saw three opening movies a month, right? For that right. that that price for twenty dollars. So, uh, I can't type apparently. So that's basically six dollars and sixty six cents, which is awesome, uh, per movie, at that price. Mm-hmm. Which literally is cutting that price in half. Like you're, yeah. it's less than half technically, because twelve fifty is not six sixty six. Anywho, yes. okay. So if we did that, right? Mm-hmm. So say we did that same equate. So twelve fifty times three is thirty seven dollars and fifty cents a month per person for those three movies. Times that by twelve, you're spending four hundred and fifty dollars a month or a year on that. Versus the opposite, which is two hundred and forty dollars for twelve months of the standard plan. So there's still a, quite a difference in like, savings in price as long as you see at least three movies per month right. on that plan. You, actually, technically, if you see two movies on this plan, you're already saving money. Because two movies is $25. Right. You're saving $5 a month. Yeah. The real problem is if you're a, a couple, you know what I mean? Like... Mm-hmm. You're spending forty dollars a month. I mean, you're still saving money because it's against this, it's the same math, right? It's forty dollars a month versus uh, eighty-five or ninety dollars a month, whatever I said it was, um, or fifty dollars a month, whatever it happens to be. So you're still saving money, um, but you do, you definitely would have to you'd have to use it. I mean, there's 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 a few times a a, a year where we go a full month without seeing a movie. Yeah. And a lot of that sometimes is like scheduling, obviously like our work schedules are fucking whack and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I mean, you could, I mean, I could see it being a good, good thing as long as we can narrow down a, we wouldn't be able to see cinema once that sucks automatically. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you can't see large format, um, or premium, so no IMAX, uh, no Dolby Cinema, no uh, 4D. Well, no 3D in general, so no 4, 4D is out of the fucking picture anyways because that's technically 3D as well. Yep. So, um, yeah, I mean, at 12.50 for regular screening here in Arizona as an opening day for a potential blockbuster that is Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse, um... I mean, it's a, it's technically a good good thing if it works out that way. If you can do the e ticketing and not have to use the fucking Mastercard bullshit, um, right. because the Mastercard thing again, I just that, at that point you're, you're it's a crapshoot of saying you're going to be able to get the ticket you want at the time. Because like, how often ever in the last, I'll say ten years, have the group of us said, "Hey, let's go see a movie right now." Yeah. And we all didn't just pick our phones up mm-hmm. and buy a ticket right then and there and then go down to the theater. Right. Never, never, I don't think that's happened. Not in a while. Not in a long time. Yeah. We usually plan it out like, hey, this day we're going to go see it this time, blah, blah, blah. You know, I got this seat, whatever, right? Yep. Then even more rarely would I ever go down to the box office and buy a fucking ticket, even from a kiosk anymore. 
because again, you're looking at a crapshoot of, am I going to get this? You'd have to be like on your phone looking at availability through like a Harkins app or like a Fandango app of what tickets might be available by the time I get down there. And hopefully those three, four, five seats we want, we need to be a group are available somewhere without sitting up front or on the side of it. But also you're looking at, you can only be doing it in a, in a smaller screen theater anyways, which means you're going to be limited on screen size and seats for that theater because very rarely, I mean, you can, yeah, I mean, there are larger cinemas that aren't a, a Cine One or a, a Dolby, you know, at a lot of these theaters, but a lot of those would convert it over. And a lot of those would yeah. be 3D at some point because they can cram more people in there to see 3D, which co- which generates more money, so they're going to do that. So you're going to end up being in a broom closet a lot of times. Mm-hmm. So, interesting. Very much so. Math-wise, it adds up to make sense. But... but- like logistically is it going to work out I don't think so like because I just don't understand how they how this makes them enough money to stay afloat again it's going to be if people buy up it's literally a subscription service for movies Netflix doesn't necessarily work because it has a lot of content out there that's really great it works because a lot of people pay for the content and don't watch Netflix yeah uh, so this is going to be the same deal this is the same deal as long as not everyone is using the the tickets to their fullest uh, then they're going to make money but if people do use it to the fullest they're not going to make a whole lot of money. Yeah, man, I don't know. It's so weird to me. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah. Movie passes back, question mark? Yeah, right? Also... That's all I had for today. <laughs> yeah, we can wrap it up, too. I had one other thing, but it doesn't matter. Um. Very interesting. Okay, all right. Anyhow, uh, that has been it for this week's episode of Comes Naturally. We have been Joe. I have been Cody. And as usual, you fuckers just came naturally.